It's been a pretty fun ASO so far, and it will continue. But now we're going to talk a little collegiate athletics, and I think we give it away behind us. Little Sam Houston State Bearcats. Our buddy Josh Criswell of the Huntsville Item joined us to talk all things Sam, including their new additions, two from Blinn, and a familiar face to the Bryan area because Zach Nuttall has a chance to be really special in some brand new Bearcat uniforms. All right, now we're going to talk a little Sam Houston State Bearcats action with Josh from the Huntsville Item. But uh, Josh, first off, a couple weeks ago we got kind of excited. Uh, during this quarantine time to see some new logos unveiled uh, by the Bearcats. What do you think of them, man? You, you know, honestly, I'm a big fan. There's there's a few traditionalists out there. I've definitely heard some complaints. You know, it, it seems like that anytime there's change. But overall, it's been an overwhelmingly positive response to it. And I love it personally. Uh, my favorite thing is the return of Walking Sammy, which is obviously the marching Sammy Bearcat, kind of an ode to the past. Um Funny story, uh, whenever, you know, Bobby Williams joined Sam Houston State as an assistant coach, that was one of the things that was still around campus. Then it kind of went away in between, you know, the 80s and the 90s. And whenever they started this process two years ago, that was the first order of business. As Bobby Williams said, I want to have walking Sammy back. So I love that. I also love them going to the, the white and orange with the possibility for some maybe some black alternate uniforms. You know, me personally, I would love to see – a blackout game in Sam Houston football whenever they get back to the field. Yeah, the walking Sammy is by far my favorite of the new mascots, and I think it'll look pretty good on basketball uniforms, especially for maybe someone like Brian High product, Zach Nuttall. We did the story on Zach earlier this year, the only underclassman to make the All-Southland Conference team, and you spoke with head coach Jason Hooten earlier this week, Josh. What is coach saying about Zach now after his sophomore season? You know, it's the same thing that me and you have talked about before, and I'm sure you've talked with Coach and Zach, and that's if he does the things that they're asking him and he continues on this progression, he has the potential to be one of the greatest players in Sam Houston State history. And I think a big part of that was his freshman season and the fact that he wasn't thrown to the fire. Head Coach Jason Hooten kind of mentioned how whenever you have those added minutes at a young age and, you know, you're playing 25, 30 minutes a game, you have bad mistakes, and it can kind of hurt your confidence. Zach was right at about 17 minutes per game as his freshman year, then took that up to 30 last season. And what you saw was him just absolutely explode, average, you know, over 15 points a game, put up over, you know, 20, put up 20 or more on nine occasions. And there was one moment, I think, more than any time all season. It was the first game back after the Christmas break in Southland Conference play at McNeese. Senior guard Chad Bowie goes down with an injury early, I think two or three minutes into the game, and Zach just absolutely takes over that game, willed his team to victory with then a career-high 25 points, topped that later in the year with 28. But, I mean, you know, he's a guy where the sky's the limit. And, you know, another thing, and probably the thing that Coach Hooten mentioned about Zach that gives him that potential is his character. And this isn't a shot at, you know, any of the guys that transfer, but we've kind of seen – a trend in college sports and particularly college basketball where players are leaving programs and maybe, you know, bouncing for better opportunities or, you know, whenever you hit adversity. And I think, you know, with a guy like Zach coming back, there's going to be a lot of new pieces, but a guy that comes back to finish what he starts, I think there's a lot to say about that. You mentioned a lot of new pieces. It's a bummer we didn't get to see this year's team compete in the South of Commons tournament. Don't know if they could have taken out SFA, but they had a lot of Good players, and Hooten's at it again, adding more good players. Josh uh, didn't have to go far for one of them to, to Brenham uh, at a blend to get Tristan Ickby. What, uh, what you, what is, what's Hooten saying about Ickby, and how, how much of a contributor can he be right away? Oh, I think he's going to be an instant contributor for the Bearcats. Very well could be a starter, um, you know, come next season. The thing that Coach Hooten said to me that made me instantly think, wow, this kid can be a valuable asset to the Bearcats is, he said he's undersized a little bit, but he reminds him of now graduated forward Kai Mitchell, who over the past two seasons, you could have argued was the best post player in the Southland Conference. They have to fill that void, and they really like how Tristan can come in and not only attack the boards. Obviously, I think he was the leading rebounder in you know, blend history, but he's a double-double guy, and he's just a versatile threat, whether he has his back you know, to the basket or he's away facing up. Every time we shot a blend game, 
we would leave and be like, oh, we got all these high – oh, wait, Tristan scored 16 points in the 13 minutes we were there. The dude just puts up numbers and is productive and efficient. On the women's side of things, too, uh, Josh, they bring in a blend product, and Christine Azamako, she was their leading scorer last year. Coach Raven Justice has this program completely turned around from where it was just a few seasons ago, Josh. And like the men, they didn't get to compete in the Southland Conference, but how does Coach Justice think – some of these new pieces and her program is positioned moving forward into the next few seasons. Yeah, you mentioned, you know, not getting to be able to compete for that Southland Conference title. And I think, you know, more than anything, the women really had a good shot to go out there and win it. That team they had just had so much momentum going with them. And the way they play, that kind of breakneck, full-speed style of basketball for 40 minutes. But they're hungry coming back. I mean, they obviously lose a talented group of seniors, I believe six of them. But you have a lot of great returning pieces. Obviously, Amber Leggett is going to be coming back for her junior year. She's going to be one of the best players in the entire Southland Conference. Expect her to contend for that Player of the Year award. And then, as you mentioned, bringing in some newcomers. And I think the, one of the big things we've seen under head coach Raven Justice's tenure is, you know, she came in at a program that, well, that was at the bottom of the barrel. I mean, everyone I asked about Sam Houston State women's basketball they said don't expect anything and the polls showed it before the year when they were picked to finish dead last then they had the third biggest turnaround in the country her first season as head coach second season they set a they uh, set a school record for Southland conference wins in a season year three I think they're going to take that next step and you know whether it's adding new pieces or whether it's just building up the girls she already has on the roster I think they're going to be a force to be reckoned with for years to come uh Josh, what, what's going on with the Bearcats football, man? We haven't seen them in the playoffs. I think this is the year that they turned around. You, you, know, you know, I said this uh, a little bit. I guess this was, you know, last August when I thought I said they would be back. But I really believe it. I mean, that defense is going to be absolutely insane. They lose two key guys at middle linebacker. But fill one in, a former A&M consolidated guy, Trevor Williams, He's going to step in at middle linebacker, and they're joking over there at the Sam Houston State coach's office that he's going to put up 200 tackles this year. He's just all over the field when you see him on tape. Had, had his opportunities last year, but is going to be a really heavy part of that. Don't lose anybody on the D-line. And they might have two NFL cornerbacks in K.J. Gray and Zion McCollum. And, I mean, you just look at the stat sheet. This is a team that, a team that brings back almost everyone on – a defense that led the country in tackles for loss, third down defense, total defense, rushing defense, and then we're in the top eight or top ten in eight other categories. So, I mean, they're absolutely stacked. They got Eric Schmidt coming back at quarterback. And I think the biggest thing about the offense is for the first time since Briscoe left campus, that two-year stretch where they went on those deep playoff runs, went 17-1 and one in Southland Conference play. They finally have that confidence back under center, and you saw what that potential could be. I talked with Casey Keeler earlier this spring, and he talked about how after that 45-6 to win over Incarnate Word, the first game where they made Eric Schmidt the undisputed starting quarterback of the Bearcats, he lit up the team that was the coach champion the year before and was at the top of the standings before falling off a cliff late in the year due to injuries. He put up over 500 yards and five touchdowns, second most yards in school history. And after that game, they believed that they were a top five offense and a top five defense. With a lot of the pieces coming back, they think they're going to be right there again. And this year, if they can just stay healthy, you're going to see a team that, in my opinion, a healthy Sam Houston State team is playing in the FCS semifinals this year. Josh Criswell with the Huntsville Item. Appreciate your time as always, my friend. Absolutely. Thank you all for having me.